Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today is a bit of a request. Um, I came across a friend who is uh, celiac, so actually medically gluten intolerant, and they mentioned that they have a hard time finding beers they like. They enjoyed beers when they were younger, and they can't enjoy beers now. <laughs> and they, you know, wanted to know whether I had any recommendations for gluten-free beers to try. My experience with gluten-free beers in general has been less than positive. I have had a, a blueberry rice beer from a microbrewery in my hometown back in California. And that was my first ever gluten-free beer that I know of. And it lacked. It lacked pretty much everything. Um, I'm sure I could probably call it light and refreshing, but it was that to, um, to excess. There was, there was no flavor. There was no body. There was no nothing. <laughs> so I went to, uh, just last week I think it was, uh, so I went to Total Wine and I looked at their gluten-free shelf. So I had like a, it was one shelf section. So like four or five, maybe six shelves tall, three feet wide, four feet wide, uh, full of gluten-free beers in a variety of styles. Uh, I have, I picked out six and today I'll be doing just the IPAs. I also have a pale ale and a black IP, which I like black IPAs, and um, one other. I can't remember what style it is. Anyway, so I'll be doing two different kind of beer flights of gluten-free and giving my honest opinion on that. I am not celiac. I am not gluten intolerant, um, thankfully. <laughs> so for me, this is me approaching these as someone who can drink full beers. Uh, so. I'm going to try and be, you know, real comparing, like, okay, what's, you know, does this appeal to me? Is it a good beer on its own? Um, and I suppose I might be able to find one that's better than others and they're all mediocre, or I might find they're actually pretty dang good. Who knows? I'm coming into this blind. Uh, anyways, the ones I have are Glutenberg, ha ha ha, IPA, and uh, they use millet, buckwheat, and corn. Uh, corn and rice are pretty common in the the, the more popular gluten-free beers. Uh, so I have the, the Glutenberg IPA. I have the Kickstep IPA by Ghostfish Brewing Company. And the Delicious IPA by Stone. Stone's in the news today, or this week, because they uh, apparently were purchased by Sapporo Brewing. Um, so everybody's saying, ah, they sold out. I don't know. I enjoy good beer. Uh, so we'll see. And in my defense, I bought this before they announced they sold out. So make of it what you will. Um, this one advertises their citrusy lemon drop hops, their tropical Eldorado hops. And they also managed to hit a 7.7 .7 alcohol by volume. And this is only gluten reduced, which is not going to work for someone full on celiac. But if someone is simply simply has a sensitivity, that might be a better option if they realize, hey, we can't get the flavor target we want going full on gluten free, but we can reduce the gluten, use less wheat, um, less barley, and so produce a, you know, a, a better flavor. So that'll be an interesting comparison to see how that stands up. I also have a glass of water <laughs> to refresh my palate, but let's uh, dive in here. It smells pretty good. So that's the glue. Uh, oh, I should save that. Save it. It. It smelled juicy and sweet. Well, that has a really, really interesting color head to it. That doesn't smell like much, but it might just be by comparison. Nice. Nah. I'll be back. Problem is now my entire table is gonna 
smell like this stone. Well, we'll see how that works. I'll be back. I got it all over my hands. Okay. Okay, so we have the Glutenberg, we have the Kickstep by Ghostfish, and we have the Delicious by Stone. Let's start over here. Hmm. Okay, I'm smelling hops, definitely. There's a bit of a citrus note to it. No, it's not me. To be honest, there's a little bit of a bathroom smell. And I think it's, there's a sweetness to it. Like, you know, the mix of, not to be gross, urine and urinal cake, right? The kind of general, um, the still off smell of a decently cleaned bathroom. It's not promising. It also has this interesting sweetness. Um, you can tell it's very clearly not malty, which, okay, IPAs aren't heavy on the malts. That's fine. Um, but it has, maybe it's the, the structure of a traditional malt uh, produces the, the body and the um, kind of the underlying foundation on which the hops build. So IPAs aren't just hops. If anything, this illustrates to me that IPAs are not just hops, even if that's all that I taste. There's still something more. The malts are, are producing some, the malts of wheat and barley are producing some underlying structure that the hops are built upon. This has a different foundation. Uh, it's definitely sweeter, but it's kind of a, 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 a candy sweetness almost. That's kind of interesting. Or, a, you know, an inexpensive tropical juice mix at your grocery store. Interesting. Okay. Now for the uh, kick step. This doesn't really smell much at all. There's a similar, I wonder if it's one of the alternate grains. Um, so this one, let's look at ingredients. The Glutenberg has water, millet, buckwheat, corn, sugars, hops, and yeast. That's interesting, so they actually have to add sugars, additional sugars. I wonder if that's necessary for the fermentation, for the brewing, or for their target flavor. Um, the kick step, the ingredients are water, malted millet, malted rice, brown rice, beet sugar, hops, and yeast. Interesting. Now, uh, beet sugar is, is, is um, in all likelihood, uh, table sugar. Uh, it's a common sugar. Uh, in Northern California, there are sugar beets grown. And there's a company called Spreckles Sugar Company that... Uh, converts the sugar beets into table sugar. Unless your bag says cane sugar, it could be beet sugar. So beet sugar is really literally just sugar. Uh, the ingredients for the stone are, okay, it doesn't actually list the ingredients, but it does say it's crafted to reduce gluten, and this beer was fermented from barley, which is a grain that contains gluten, but it was crafted to reduce the gluten. Um, <laughs> the gluten content of this beer cannot be verified, and this beer may contain gluten. Interesting. So they were going more for flavor, so they're caring less about the, um, less about the particular target ingredients. Okay, so very similar. Um, you know, let me see. They don't list millet, so... Yeah, okay. So that kind of bathroom funkiness, I wonder if that's the result of the millet um, as the, the grain they're using. This one has an interesting syrupy sweetness. Um, I'm picking up, there are more hops in this than there are in this to the nose. Um, I'm picking up, it's a, almost a molasses mixed with um, caramel sweetness, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. 
And I'm definitely still picking up some crackers. Uh, so the malt, the barley malt in this is definitely providing a different set of flavors, a more traditional set of beer flavors. That's that's interesting. Um, okay. Well, I've smelled them. <laughs> they are th three very different colors. As you can see, we have a um, kind of a, uh, a straw, uh, lemonade yellow almost kind of thing with a touch of red over here for the glutenberg. We have a very, very red, but still still pale. It's not like amber. Um, I mean, it could be a light amber almost in the, the kick step. And then kind of halfway in between <laughs> for the stone. In fact, I'm going to do this. I am going to switch because this is also the order in which the hops are more pronounced in the beer. Um, this one I smell the most hops in. This one is in the middle and this one has less. This one is this kind of um, uh, lemonade almost, lemonade iced tea kind of color. This is kind of in, be in between and this is approaching an amber. So let's see, I wonder I wonder if with the, the lighter grains, they might have taken more time roasting them darker uh, in order to try and build up flavors that might come more readily in alternate malt. I wonder if that might be some other reason why they've gone that direction. But, you know, I'm going to start on this end because this one smells the least and I don't want these to wipe out that on my palate. So let's give this a taste. Okay, first thing, I would not turn that down. It's not offensive in any way. It is, it's not weak, it's not light. There's just not a lot to it. Um, it tastes like a diluted IPA, a diluted, decently good IPA, but still diluted. There's nothing off, there's nothing bad about that. I am honestly impressed. Um, like I said, I wasn't entirely sure what I was expecting except to be disappointed, and I'm not disappointed. So, woohoo! Yay for kickstep! <laughs> and honestly, lacking the kind of weird... But once I get it in my mouth, the, the, the bathroom flavor really isn't there, so maybe that's a wash. Maybe that was just my first nose, unfamiliar things. Um, there is a little bit of a maltiness. That's, that's good. I like that. There is the hops. The hops are kind of there and then gone, though. I wonder if diluting the beer is the significant part of reducing the gluten content to the point where they can say it's actually gluten-free. Um, I don't actually know like what the what the levels are and how they do this, whether millet actually has zero gluten in it, um, or if it's just really low, low enough that it should fall below most people's levels. Um, but there is a maltiness to this that is pleasant. There's a hop. It's just overall kind of thin. There's kind of a, maybe an apple juice note kind of binding it together through the middle. Actually, there's almost a, a brownie note, that extra sweetness. It's interesting. Yeah, that, it's not terrible. I would not turn that down. Given a choice of pretty much any other craft beer, I would not pick that. But given a choice between that and um, <laughs> and the, the blueberry rice beer I had 15 years, oh gosh, when was that? Was that? I think that was, no, probably seven years ago, eight years ago, I guess, because it might have, I can't remember. I think it was seven or eight years ago. Um, I would probably be, I would definitely be more happy with this than with that. So yay to Ghostfish and Kickstep. That is a reasonably tasty approximation of an India Pale Ale um, that if you're celiac and you miss your IPAs, or you have a gluten intolerance or sensitivity, I think this might scratch that itch. Not too badly. 
Let's now move on to the delicious IPA by the sellouts. I mean, by Stone. Okay. Carrot juice? Okay, that's, there's, there's lemon peel kind of on the finish. The finish is nice. It's just kind of hanging around there. So those hops are, are nice. That, that's good. Um, yeah, stepping back to this really quick, it fades to water in your mouth with just this little faint bitterness really quickly. Um, this, it's still hanging around there. I am tasting lemon peel for days. It is all around my mouth. It is going down my throat. If that's what you like in your IPA, this has it. The problem is, is what it takes to get there. So it has this, this sweetness, this breadiness. Uh, so it definitely has more of a traditional malt. So this is not gonna be appropriate for celiac, for true celiacs. If you just have a gluten sensitivity, this has far more flavor than that, but um, it's just got this kind of weird, uh, I don't know, it, I should drink more. Loss for words? I mean, how does that happen? I, I'm me after all. Loss for words? That never happens. <laughs> okay. Uh, sweet. Interestingly sweet. Oddly sweet. Um, once again, kind of an apple juice. Uh, kind of a, a, a breadiness, which is kind of interesting. Um, then this like vegetable juice almost. Uh, yeah, not apple juice. Sorry. Like a vegetable juice. Like a uh, like the, with a V8 splash or something, those super sugared vegetable juices um, kind of is the middle portion. But those citrus hops, so the citrusy lemonade hops, I guess, is what it is. Um, they're there really early and they just hang around. They do not go away. Uh, if you like that really aromatic um, IPA where it's just you know herbs for days <laughs> this this has it this has it in spades uh so far more flavorful than the kick step far more there's a little bit of interesting stuff going on i suppose i should say once again none of it is offensive it's it's kind of weird to me um and and i'll just kind of leave it at that You'll probably enjoy this, especially if you're only gluten sensitive more than that. Um, but if you're not gluten sensitive and celiac, I would probably pick this over that, to be honest. Hmm. Well, let's move on. So the Glutenberg is the lightest in color, had the most pronounced hop note to the nose initially and uh let's see orange juice frankly i'm not sure if i'm still dealing with the leftover orange peel overload or lemon peel overload from the stone. Uh, let's try something. I'm gonna grab a saltine. Hmm, stale saltines. Of course, the problem is now I've got saltines stuck in every single one of my teeth. That's right, I'm used to picking stuff out of them. So, how you doing? 
It's the first warm day of our year. Goodness gracious, summer started late for us this year in the Northwest. It's supposed to hit upper 80s today and low 90s tomorrow. Yay! We live in a house without air, without air conditioning. Last year it hit over 100 degrees twice and stayed there for a couple days. And um, yeah, that's a real pain in a house without air, without air conditioning. We tried to escape up to Whidbey Island on a day that it hit 113 degrees here. We have some friends on Whidbey and uh, we went to the beach there on Whidbey. But it was low tide, it's kind of a rocky beach. And uh, it was facing west into the sun. It was just hot. I grew up in the Northern California Valley. I'm used to 100 degree days. I mean, relatively so. We didn't have air conditioning growing up. Granted, I've put on a few pounds since then. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> Anyways, let's try this again now. Now I've got most of the... Uh, there's still... Oh, goodness. There is still... A hint of that lemon peel hop down deep in my throat but it's not in my mouth so <laughs> I should have done this one last <laughs> anyways let's try it out again okay this one has a very interesting body very nice body it feels like it has some depth to it um, it's not nearly so hopped as the stone. Uh, it has far more body than the Kickstarter. It has almost an orange juice uh, body to it, and the flavor isn't terribly off. It's it's quite citrusy. Um, it's dry though. It's not it's not sweet, uh, which that's nice. I that I think that works better for this style. Um, that's, this is actually quite, I think this is the best of these three. Um, and I would say it stands up better to IPAs in general. It's got enough of a finish. It doesn't fade to water like the Kickstarter does. Um, instead, I'm left with almost a malty, though it's slightly sweet, slightly sweeter than just you know crackers or or bread, like a, just a plain malt. Um, I'm trying to think. It, it's interesting. It is kind of a. It, it is still citrusy, but there's. It's like halfway between citrus and malts. What's what's halfway between citrus and malts? I don't know. It has maybe a saltiness to it. Um, I don't know, but that's, that one, there are gluten, there are full gluten, full beers that I would prefer less than this. And I'm not talking about, about, you know, the big mega beers, um, the, the Glutenberg millet, buckwheat, and corn gluten-free craft beer at 6% ABV. Um, that is a respectable uh, IPA. Now, if you're a hop head, so limiting yourself, limiting myself to Seaviac, so excluding the stone gluten, like low gluten beer, reduced gluten beer, um, this is arguably hoppier. The hops are more pronounced, they come in earlier, and they might stick around a little bit longer. This one is just a fuller bodied beer. The Glutenberg IPA is just fuller bodied. There's, there's just more to it. And I don't simply mean that it's a 16 ounce versus a 12 ounce can. Um, ha ha ha. <laughs> it's, there's just more to it. It's a, but it, it's just, there's, there's, more, there's more body, there's more things going on. They're not um, unpleasant things. It doesn't disappear too quickly. It hangs around. It's kind of more like a, a light hazy than a light IPA. And they're not advertising as a hazy IPA, it's just an IPA. Let's try the kick step again. 
Now, I've got the flavors all mixed up in my mouth now. So as I'm trying the Kickstarter again, just to kind of compare head to head, it's going to be colored by the fact that this is in my mouth too. IPAs are heavily herbaceous. The hops are herbs. So those oils from the hops, they get in your mouth and they hang around. That's just the nature of an IPA. So I am tasting this as I'm tasting this. So first, my first taste is the better taste, but now I'm just gonna see, having these in my mouth, what, are there some more obvious differences or you know, which one am I actually preferring now going into this? Okay, this is overall a cleaner, but more watery. It tastes diluted. That was my first impression, is that it was a diluted IPA. It's still that. Um, now with all these other hops in my mouth going on, this almost has a tomato-like smell to it. And I'm once again less impressed by it. Um, yes, like I said, compared to my the, the, the rice beer I had, some number of years ago it's better than that but of these three it's it is inferior um the glutenberg has far more body it's not quite so heavily hopped but the hops are still there and they kind of they're they're mild but they're there they hang around for a long time and it has this really nice like i said this orange juiciness that is gives it's a really nice body uh it's got some really cool stuff going on uh it's not trying to be too much though it's not like a super crazy weirdo craft um that's <laughs> i don't know some some craft beers are like really <laughs> i mean i'll try them once right because beer is beer but but still some at some point you just go really <laughs> okay um but it's a it's a decent ipa it's a mild but still full-bodied full-flavored IPA and that's saying something considering it's gluten-free they didn't have the wheat they didn't have the barley to work with and they produced this good on you glutenberg I'll probably I mean I'm not gonna have any pressure to keep this on my shelf still compared to the type of beer that I typically buy this isn't as big isn't as tasty it's but it's really dang close like like it, it gets up into the okay how do I describe this I like different beers for different reasons and now I'm just gonna ramble until I come to something that I feel comfortable finishing on so I should probably stop before I fit before I even start <laughs> um, it's a good beer the Glutenberg IPA is a good beer the stone delicious IPA considering that they were only going for a um, a gluten reduced beer it's an okay beer it's not as good as the glutenberg full-on gluten-free beer they did not make use of their extra barley as well as glutenberg made use of their no barley kickstarter is an okay beer that's all it's an okay beer um, i would not if i were celiac I would be happy to have a beer this good compared with my own previous experience. Hopefully in this flight and in my next uh, review, which will be of the other three that I have, I'll even have more experience. Um, but the Glutenberg, I would be happy to drink this beer. I probably won't keep it in my cupboard. Gluten-free beers tend to be more expensive. Um, and like I said, I have access to all the beers in the world because I'm glu not gluten intolerant but if I ever became gluten intolerant or if I had celiac I would be happy with this beer I mean heck I'm happy with this beer without being gluten intolerant so I think I'll catch y'all on the flip side and I am going to finish this gluten burn the rest probably